Y'all are not gonna believe what I just did. I just recorded half of this project without turning my mic on. I cannot believe I did that. So now, welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. Hello if you have not. I'm Molly, apparently the world's biggest dingbat because I don't turn my mic on before I start recording. I cannot believe I did that. So I am just going to finish up what I'm doing and then I'm going to re-record. So what you're about to watch will be what I have redone. So technically my second wall hanging, but we're going to pretend that it's my very first wall hanging that I'm making. Oh yeah, I'm weaving a wall hanging. Do you want to learn how? Because I can show you. Want to learn how to properly record a video? Can't do that but I can show you how to weave a wall hanging. All right, so here are the things that you're gonna need to do this weaving. First and foremost, you need a loom. Uh, you do not have to go fancy with these. I will put a link to everything that I talk about in the description below. You can get these really, really cheap. Most looms, when you order them, are gonna come with kind of like a little kit. So if yours doesn't though, like this little piece that comes with it, you can always just use a wooden ruler. And then this piece right here, you can always take a piece of cardstock or cardboard and cut little grooves in the end. This is like our little shuttle. But you really, you don't have to have anything fancy. All right, so once you have your loom, you need to have some string. And the string that you're gonna to want to use is something that does not have a lot of pull to it. You don't want a lot of flexibility. So twine is really good. Uh, hemp will work. Uh, some ribbon, some people just like to use ribbon. It's really up to you. I like just good old kitchen twine, works great. You're also gonna need scissors. You're gonna need just a little piece of mat board or honestly it could be the side of like a cereal box but you're gonna wanna cut, this is about an inch thick. I like to use like a little darning needle, just like a cheap, this is just like a kid's plastic needle, but it has a really large eye and that's what you're gonna want for when you're weaving. They do sell like a tapestry needle that are really, really cool. They're long, wooden, and have a big fat eye on them. I don't own one yet, but I do really want one. So if I find a really good one, I may link it below because I really need one. You're also gonna need either a hair pick or a wide tooth comb. They do sell specific combs for making weavings, but honestly, this thing works just as well. Now, the next thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need some yarn, a variety of thicknesses. I tend to weave a little bit chunkier than some people just because it goes faster that way, but I like, and I like bulky and heavier. So I have just a variety of different types of yarns and thicknesses, look at that big guy. You can also weave in fabric if you'd like, you can weave in beads. I've seen people use trim, like the little pom-pom trim, and they'll do that, it makes little clusters, it looks like little snowballs in there, it's really cute. But just figure out your color palette and grab a variety of thicknesses and textures of yarn. And let's get started. So for my inspiration piece today, I actually have a weaving from a good friend of mine, Dana, which I will link her Instagram below. It's Dana in Memphis. She does, she's an incredible artist. She paints, she does weavings, she does just all sorts of things. She's amazing. But this is a weaving that she made for me. And I was looking at it the other day and I was like, you know what, I love weavings. I should share how to do a weaving with you guys. So this is my inspiration piece. I'm gonna show you guys everything that you need to know to get started weaving. First thing that we need to do is we need to use our string to create our warp. Now the warp is going to be the strings that are strung across your loom that's gonna be what you weave onto, okay? So we're going to string up our warp, and then what we weave is actually called the weft. Now, the thing that's really important when you are 
setting up your loom. You do not want your warp to be too loose, but you also don't want it to be super, super tight. As I'm gonna start in the top left corner of mine, I'm gonna take my string and I'm just gonna tie a simple knot so I have a loop at the top. So now that I have the little loop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stick it over the first groove on my loom. And now, all you do is you go from one end to the next. But as you turn the corner, so I'm gonna pull gently, but as you turn the corner, pinch it with your thumb to bring it back this way. And that way you ensure that you are holding the tension on this. And we're just gonna go back and forth until we fill up this entire loom. Okay, so once you get to the end, what you're gonna do is holding that tension in there. I'm gonna put my finger down on this side and I'm going to wrap this around and I'm just gonna tie a simple knot pulling this up tight, okay? Then I'm going to come down here. I'm gonna do one more knot. Okay. Now, if when you go across, this one feels a little loose, what you can always do is you can just tug on the next one and then you pull on the next one. And you just keep pulling until you've added some tension. And that'll tighten it up nicely. All right, so the first thing that we need to do before we start weaving is we need to actually put in this little piece of cardboard. And that is going to be a little stopper at the bottom. So we're just gonna start going under, over, under, over, and just weave this all the way through. There we go. So now this is a stopping point so that I know that I can't weave below that. All right, now what I wanna do is, so the way that Dana has hers, where it has this fringe on the bottom, I want to do some fringe. But you can't start with fringe. You actually have to have a foundation in which to put the fringe on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a very basic weave straight across. We're gonna go traditional, over, under, over, under. And that's gonna be the foundation that we're gonna start with. I'm gonna go ahead and weave in our first little foundation row. Now, to measure, to get an idea of how much yarn you want, because you don't want a ton of yarn, because weaving a bunch of yarn through this is a pain, and you're not gonna to wanna to deal with that. So, just to kind of give me a ballpark measurements, I like to start with a pretty decent tail, because I have to be able to weave this back in. So I start, I have this finger on the tail, and then I'm gonna go about the width of my loom, maybe a little wider. All right, so I'm gonna let go of that one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's gonna be my foundation. What I'm gonna do for this first one, you can weave through with your fingers, you can weave through with the little needle I showed you, but I'm gonna do something with this guy. So this is a little shuttle. And so you're just gonna slide, slide your yarn right through that little slot. And then you're just gonna simply wrap around the shuttle. That's what those grooves are for, so that it can handle the bulk of that yarn. And then I'm gonna leave about a foot worth. Now it's time to grab this piece or the wooden ruler that I told you to get. We're gonna weave through the warp with this thing. So I'm just gonna simply start, I'm gonna go under, over, under, over, and I'm just gonna go all the way across. 
All right, so now that I have this all the way through, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually twist this up. And so what that has done is it's created a little separation. You see that right there? So now, so I'm gonna take my little shuttle and I'm just gonna slide it across to this side. And I'm gonna hold onto this tail because I don't want that to fall out. And I'm gonna pull this down and then leave the, leaving this tail, I'm gonna pull this in down. I'm gonna pinch onto this bottom left side. I'm gonna lower this and take that out. And I'm gonna go up with it, holding onto this. So I'm pinching my yarn onto this first warp string, just pinching it. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm pulling it up and then I'm going to pull it up and then I'm gonna slide it back down so that it makes a little arch like that. The reason that you do it this way and the reason you pinch and then you don't add a whole lot of tension is if you pull too tight on these warp strings, your whole piece is going to pull in and you don't want that. You want to try to get it as nice and smooth on the sides as possible. And it's not an easy thing to do. I still mess up on it. Because now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this brush, this comb, and you're just gonna slide your yarn down, okay? Now it's not as important on that first piece that you do that because it's not attached yet. It's when it is attached to a side that it really starts to pull in. So with this one, you have some wiggle room to kind of play around with. All right, now it's time for the next row. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my little ruler piece and I'm gonna do the opposite of what I did before. So before I did under, over. So this time I'm gonna do over, under. You always wanna do the opposite thing that you did the row before. And that's gonna lock everything in place. Again, I'm gonna turn this side up. Send my shuttle back through going the different direction. Now this is where it's really important. This is where, if I were to pull it, and you can see, if I were to pull this, you see how that warp starts to go in? We don't want that. So I'm gonna loosen that. I'm going to just pinch that yarn onto that warp. I'll lower this, take it out. This is gonna go up, and then I'm just going to drag it down so that there's a nice little arch here. And then I'm gonna take my comb and just smooth this down. All right, now I'm gonna do six rows of this and then we're gonna start on the Raya knots. So now I have six layers of this, just basic weave. And this is just the foundation for the Raya knots. So you're gonna notice that as I'm working, I'm not putting knots in anything. Like I cut it loose, I'm not tying anything to the strings. I cut it loose and then all my pieces can just slip to the back. And then afterwards, I'll show you how to weave those back in, but we're not tying any knots onto our warp. Okay, now for my fringe. So I'm gonna be using this dark gray yarn for my fringe. And the way that I'm gonna measure this is and it's just gonna be a whole lot easier to do it this way. I'm gonna actually use the frame of my loom to measure this. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna wrap this around 74 times. 74 times. That's how many I need for this. So I just take my scissors down, cut it out. Okay. All right, here is all of my fringe. So the way that you do a Raya knot. So once we find that middle point right there, you're gonna come over to your loom and you're gonna to come to your first two strings right here. And here's our middle point. You're gonna put this 
on top of those two strings and then you're going to pull the right side through if I can get it. There you go. You can pull the right side through and then you're going to pull the left side through. Try to even them up as much as you can. And then you're going to pull down like that, okay? And so this down here is going to keep it nice and secure. So there's one. Let me show you again. So we're going to find our middle, go to our next two threads, put this on top. Pull the right side through, pull the left side through, even these up the best you can. Then we're going to take this and we're just going to slide it down like that. And that's how we're going to make our fringe. And see it just makes that little knot on top. Now after you have finished your raya knots, in order to secure those, you're going to need to do a basic weave on top. So here I'm just going through and adding three more layers of just a basic weave to make sure that I really lock those raya knots in place. Now if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Since I am having to start this project over again because of my little snafu, I'm gonna have two wall hangings. So I am going to give one of my wall hangings away. If you would like a chance to win one of these wall hangings, be sure to comment below. I would love a wall hanging. If you'd like additional entries for chances to win one of these, head over to my Good Golly Gal Instagram page and there you'll see my post all about my wall hanging. You'll be able to enter over there for an additional chance to win. All right. Let's get back to it. We're gonna go. So now this is going to go over this. So we're gonna go under. Over. So so here's one. So we're gonna go on top of the one and then under three. And on top of one, under three. On top of one, under three, on top of one, under three, on top of one. Over three. Send this back through. Like that. Hold that corner. Pull up and oops and down. Beautiful. All right, and that is the basket weave. Isn't that beautiful? So I think what I'm gonna do is I think I just want to do two little rows of sumac here. So I'll show you how to do that one. And you need a little extra room for the sumac because there's a little bit of traveling back and forth with it. But the, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, I'm gonna teach you how to do a sumac weave. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the short end in your left hand and the long end in your right hand. And you're gonna take your finger and you're gonna go underneath two of the warp threads and you're going to take, the, the yarn is gonna go on top of it and then back around and underneath it like this, okay? Then you're gonna put it up, grab two more warp threads, pull it 
pull it underneath like that and you're just gonna keep you're just gonna keep going all the way across pull this through pull that down gently go up So now we're going to turn this corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yarn over my hand like this and I'm going to put my fingers underneath this warp and I'm going to stick that yarn through and I'm going to pull it down. Go to the next one, pull it up. Pull it through and pull it down. And you're just going to keep doing this all the way across. So as long as you remember to grab it with your thumb right here and then pull this up and don't pull it hard and just gently pull that up. Last one right here. We'll pull that down. And I'm going to very gently pull that down. I just want to make sure that it's even. Okay. And there's my sumac weave. So again, I'm going to leave these to weave in to the back later. Now, one thing I love about weaving is that you can just get creative with this. You can just play around with it, you know, see what you can come up with, different patterns, different designs. You also don't have to just keep going straight across in a line. You can build up on one side and then add a different color over here. You really have a lot of freedom with this. See how these threads are all kind of grouped together now? I'm going to try to get these to come back. All right, so we've gotten these in, so now we need to get some more depth here. So we need this to come off here a little bit. Time to bring in the big guy. I love, love, love this bulky chenille yarn. It is so soft. All right. So we're gonna measure this across. Two, whoop. One, two, three. We'll start with three. My downside of the chenille is it it just falls apart into your hand on the ends. I go over three, under three. And since I'm doing it this way, it makes it a whole lot easier to do it just with my hands. Gently down, leave some room down here. And with this one, I don't really need to go up and over to do the arch. All right, so now we're gonna go under, under three, over three, under three. Over three. 
Now right here, when we make this turn, this is where I want to pinch this. And I can go up and then pull down like this. And this is gonna stick off the side some because it's fluffy. So there's no other choice, but it's fine. It's totally fine to go that way. All right. So that's gonna go under, so we're gonna go back this way. All right, so now we need to bring in some more color. And I love this kind of chartreuse green, greeny yellow. I love this color. All right, so now that we have this great texture, I want to add this great kind of chartreuse yellow green. It's so pretty. And I wanna do something similar to my fringe, but I want this to be shorter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure this. And I don't want these as long as these other, the other fringe was but I need it long enough to be able to get it through the string. Okay, so here are my little fringe pieces and I'm probably gonna add more. I just, this is just what I wanted to start with. So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm just gonna go two together and just like before, move this out. Just like before, I'm gonna get two pieces of string. Start with the middle. And pull this side through. And this side through. And then I'm gonna pull it down. And I wanna make sure I don't pull too hard down because I don't want I don't want this to be crushed. I still want this to be nice and fluffy. So I took that, and then I actually am going to go I'm not going to go all the way across with this one. I'm going to do a row of some, and then I'm going to go up with it just a little bit. Right here, see how this knot was on these two strings and this knot was on these two strings and this knot was on these two. I'm splitting them, going between them. So now what I'm gonna do got this little fringe here, but I actually want to cut it just a little bit because I really want it to be more like a, a poof. I just realized that I had not turned my mic on. Ugh. I have no idea. I have no idea if there was any audio the first part of this video or not. Y'all. And I was just about to come on here and tell y'all because I've been filming with this one so I could get some detailed shots and I was just wanted to get on this one so I could say I was having the perfect night because I'm in here crafting and I can hear that my husband is in the other room doing the dishes such a good night and then I just realized that <sighs> okay it's not the end of the world it's okay I may want to puke but that's okay as you can see so far I've been working in nice little straight lines but I want to add a little bit more interest to this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to kind of slope in and add a little bit of movement to this little wall hanging. So to make my life easier, I'm gonna cut this on a more manageable length. 
And then I'm gonna come in through the back and then just leave a little tail there. And then what I'm going to do, I'll do it this way so you guys can see. I'm gonna go over two, under two. So I'm gonna, the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm actually going to do four rows of this stitch and then I'm gonna go in some. So I'm gonna continue working my way in so that it starts to slope up. this little V going up here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lock in these Raya knots here. And we're gonna bring in a little bit more of this darker gray going up. All right, so now I'm gonna show you, when you get to the point where your, your weaving is it's come up to another section. So see how there isn't like a, an empty space here. And so instead of me jumping, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to tie in. So I'm gonna separate these two little parts right here, and then I'm going to weave into that. So we're gonna be interlocking those two sections so that we don't have a big gap. And what I'm gonna do is split these two and then I'm gonna go under this one and then back up. So with this one, it's done a little different because you can't pull up because then it'll, you'll end up pulling that. So I'm just gonna hold this and just pull gently and then push it down. And you'll see how that see how that goes now into that design, and then now we don't have a gap where we have an empty space for the yarn. So put that in there. So I think I'm going to come in and add a little bit more chunk. I think we need some more chunk in our lives. What do y'all think? Let's go chunky. All right. I like you, you're cute. You're a cutie. Let's just play. And I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna wrap gently around the pencil like this. And then I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna go skip two. So I'm gonna wrap up and over. And then under two. How did that just happen? Okay. So I'm going to go over and under. Because I like this little braid that it's making on the top. And then I'm going to go under too.
this is going to be all that we can do for the yarn. So I'm going to leave my pencil in here and I need to lock this in place otherwise my little loop-de-loops are not going to work. All right, so we're going to take this blue and lock that in place. Just a simple weave. I'm just going to press that down nice and snug. And now, pull out our pencil and we've got cute little cuties. Look at our little curly guys. that tight. So I've got my little loop-de-loos, got some nice texture. All right, so what I want to do is I want to pull red back up in here, and then I think I want to do another little poof up on this side. So I will say, if this is your first time weaving, get thicker yarn. You are not going to want to start weaving with a thinner yarn because it will take you a very long time. Let's go with a nice little basket. We'll go under one over three. All right. There we go, there we go. you in the back. So here we are. Since I have my little poof ball down here, I think I want to make like just like a little poof here, but in the pink so I can pull that pink back up here. It's so hot in Memphis. All right, so we're gonna go, we're just gonna go old school, friends. Oh, thank you, air conditioning. So grateful that our air conditioner's working. I have so many friends whose air conditioners are not working right now. And I don't know why Summer is trying to show off right now and be like, hey, look how hot I am. But it is brutal. go. So that's two. So we'll go under, over, under, over, under. Talking to myself again. I think I am going to invent karaoke crafting. Doesn't that sound fun? So while we craft, we sing. Although I'm not a great singer, so I don't know that that would be great for y'all. It sure would be fun for me. So if you've made it to this point in the video, I just want to let you know that you're my favorite person in the whole world. And if you've made it to this point in the video and you have not left me a comment yet, uh, let's think of something fun that you could say. What is a non bad word, bad word in your house. So like what words do y'all say in your house in place of a bad word? This should be fun. Although <laughs> anyone who doesn't get to this part of the video will be like, what is wrong with these people? But for those of us who made it, we would know. It's our inner circle. Nobody else knows. They're not part of our inner circle. They're only part-time watchers. They don't get to know the details of the full-time watcher club. So, my mom is the queen, the absolute queen of fake bad words. She says, uh, which, by the way, she does not ever, ever say any actual real bad words. Uh, when I was younger, she actually said the word crap. 
apologize. I should have put in a warning. Warning, bad word coming. My mom used the word crap once and I was so upset because I'd never heard her say anything close to a bad word that I actually cried. Isn't that funny? I mean, oh, shoot, what did I do? Okay, um, yeah, I actually cried. So, my mom loves to say things like toot berries and crud zuts and what's another one that she says? It's so funny. Uh, she says Aswani a lot. Can you tell we're from the South? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else she says. She has some really, really interesting ones for sure. I say dead gummit a lot. Um, what else do I say? Shoot. Oh, I say shoot. All right, so I cannot wait to hear what your non-bad word words are. Because I could probably use some. Okay, friends, here she is. So I need to weave in this, because look at the back. I need to weave these things in. All right, it is time to clean up this mess. So what I'm gonna do before I ever take it off of this loom, it's just gonna be easier. I'm gonna actually start with the one that's still connected to the needle. So I'm gonna pull that to the back, like so. And then all that I'm going to do is I'm gonna find a little row. And I'm just gonna slide my needle down this. Now one thing you want to make sure of, actually I'll just go up. One thing you want to make sure of is that you do not go through to the front because you do not want to mess up your pattern on the front. So see I've got two little loops right here. I'm just gonna pull my needle up through this. Gently have that. You can always check the front to see if you've messed anything up. Nope. And then I'm going to actually pull, go down one more. I'm one of those people that I set my car alarm and then I set it again to make sure it's extra set. So you're gonna see me do some extra steps in here that aren't necessary. But it makes me feel better and that's what matters. All right, next one. So I'm just gonna go through and continue to do that, pull all these little pieces down. All right, so I've pulled two of these off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these together like this. Tie a little knot. Now the reason that I can do it this way on the bottom is because I have this fringe. So if I did not have this fringe, I would not want to do something like this because it's kind of ugly to look at, okay? So another way that you can do this is you can take those, snip them. Y'all see? 
So I snipped those two ends and then you just tie them together like that. But since I have all this heavy fringe at the bottom, oh gosh, mine doesn't have to be pretty. All right, so once that is off, this top part comes off so much easier. Because now this part will just lift right off of this. So see, let me just pull it right off like this. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie this. You can either weave these in or you can snip them. If you snip them, you run the risk of them stain it staining up, so it's usually better to just kind of weave it in. Okay. All right, so I've got everything pretty well tucked in here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my stick kind of where I want this to go. And I'm going to actually just stitch this onto this stick. So as I go through, I'm going to go underneath. And I'm always looking to try to go from that same row at about equal distance apart. I'm just going to keep on going down. Okay, final step. I just wanna make sure that everything is evenly spaced. Now, all I have to do is tie a knot in the top. So, I'm just gonna go a little overhand knot. Secure that. Snip. And she's complete. So here is my beautiful wall hanging all ready to go. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you learned something new. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload a video. As always, guys, thank you for joining me and make sure that you allow yourself a little me time. It's so important. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.